So the Haitian matrix, which is the second derivative, is also very, very important. All right. So after those things, let me give you a quick example, small numerical example to explain how to calculate the Haitian or the second de matrix derivative. As before, suppose I give you a function f depending on both variables x and y. Let's say x squared times y squared. Then if you take the second derivative of f with respect to x squared, that should be 2y squared. And I hope that should be clear to you, right? Just in case you don't see it, if you take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, that means you have to hold the variable y as a constant. So that will be 2x times y squared. And then if you take the derivative again one more time with respect to x, you get del, del x of del f, del x, the derivative of this 2x squared, 2xy squared with respect to x will be 2y squared. And that is exactly what you got in here, okay? Similarly, you can calculate the second derivative of f with respect to y squared. That would be equal to 2x squared. And if you take the second derivative with respect to x first, and then after that with respect to y, that will be the same thing as the second derivative of f with respect to y first, and then with respect to x, and the answer is 4xy. So, that will give you the general expression for the Haitian matrix. However, if you want to calculate the Haitian matrix corresponding to the location x equal to 2 and y equal to 1, then all you have to do is whenever you see y, you replace by 1. Whenever you see x, you replace by 2. Whenever you see x, you replace by 2. Whenever you see y, you replace by 1. So that way, your Haitian matrix can be computed numerically as 2, 8, 8, 8. Okay? So that is shown right there. So now you know how to calculate the Haitian or the second derivative of a given function that have two variables evaluated at the current point. X has some value, Y has some value at the current point. So after knowing all of those things, let's see how we can put all of those knowledge together in order to come up with a good algorithm to figure out the optimum solution. Here it is. We have a method called steepest ascent or steepest descent method. The idea is very simple. Let's say suppose you have a function f that is depending on many variables. That's why x is a vector. And let's say we want to find the vector x such that the function f will be minimized or could be maximized, you know, one of the two. So in general, just say optimum. Well, the procedure in the big picture is look like this. First, you just guess the initial solution, which we call x at iteration zero. Then, from this known point, the first step you ask yourself is, so step one is what? Step one, you have to come up with the initial guess, okay? Which we call x at iteration zero. The next step, which we call step two. What is step two is about? Step two say like this. 
knowing the initial gas x0 i125 what is the best direction to travel and the reason is because from point x0 i can the, the direction to travel to the next point could be this direction could be this direction could be this direction could be this direction could be any direction for that matter so the step two the objective say among all the possible direction to travel from the starting point x0 what is the best direction to travel okay so suppose the answer is well, the best direction to travel in starting from x0 is this direction. Suppose that is the best direction. Well, you may want to know, so what is that direction? The answer is, the best direction to travel starting from x0 will be the direction of the gradient of the objective function. Now remember, in this situation, I consider a very general case. The small function f could be a function of a lot of variables like x1, x2, xk, and so on. So the gradient of f means partial derivative f with respect to x1, partial derivative f with respect to x2, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So that would be a vector. So, the answer is this. Knowing the initial gas x0, the best direction to travel from there will be the direction of the gradient of the objective function. Well, then what happened to the next question? The next question will be like this. Knowing the direction to travel is like the red arrow that I show you on the screen. We want to know how far in that direction we should go. In other words, should I go only this much in that direction that we just found? Or should we travel this much in that direction that we just found? Or should we travel only this much in that direction that we just found? How far we should go in that direction? That is the question that we have to concern in step number three, which I will show you on the next slide. Okay? Assuming, let's say, based on step three, you say, well, along the direct direction, we should travel all the way to here, that far. That means, knowing the direction, which is the red arrow that you found in step two, and knowing how far you should travel along that direction, that means up to here, that means now you can figure out the new improved solution x at iteration 1, assuming you did that step 3 already. And then, starting from point x1, you ask the same question again. From this point, current point x1, which direction I have to travel? Which direction I have to travel? Suppose the answer is, this is the good direction to travel. That means step number two. And then you say, along that direction that you just found, how far we should travel? The answer is, let's say, up to here. Once you answer that question, how far you travel, that will give you the new improved solution x at iteration two. And then you keep doing that until you hit the optimum solution. So that is the main idea about the so-called uh, steepest descent method. And this method requires the gradient information about the objective function. Because to calculate the best direction to travel, we say that is based on the gradient of the objective function. Okay? So... To summarize it, the most important thing about the uh, steepest descent algorithm is first you have to figure out what is the best direction to travel. To answer that question, it requires a lot of computational effort. Then the second question, 
is how far along that direction you should travel. Okay? So, let's see what happens on the next slide. Yeah, remember I told you in step three, you have to find out along the direction of the gradient that you found in step two. And now in step three, you have to say, what should be the step size h along that direction? Assuming you know how to answer that, then you go to step four. So what does step four say? Step four say like this. You start with the initial guess, which we call it x at iteration i. Based on the initial get x sub i, you will calculate the gradient of the objective function f evaluated at that initial guess. That gradient will give me the good, the best direction to travel. And then after that, you calculate how far in that direction you have to travel. That means you have to figure out the step size h. Now, if you know h, the step size from step 3, if you know the gradient delta f, the gradient of the objective function from step 2, now you can easily calculate the next improved solution x at iteration i plus 1. And then, as soon as you get the new improved solution, step 5 will be the conversion check. How do you know when to stop? How do you know when you get the optimum solution? Well, the theory say you will stop when the conversion occur, when the gradient at your newest design point is almost zero. For example, like 10 minus 5. So if you calculate the gradient at the current point x iteration i plus 1, and you evaluate that gradient at that point x i plus 1, and you find out that the, the, the norm of that factor, del f, is very small, that means you say the derivative, the gradient is 0, so you will stop. That means you get the conversion solution. Otherwise, if it's not true, if the gradient of f is still bigger than the tolerance, then you know it's not converse. You should go back to step number two. You go back to step number two. However, you use the newest current point as like an initial guess. So for example, you go back to step number two on the previous slide. You see? You go back to step two, you will calculate the gradient again. But this time, that gradient you calculated is evaluated at the new point that you just calculated at iteration i plus one. You see? And then the procedure is repeated, repeated until it converges. So, I believe that is the very detailed step-by-step -step algorithm. Uh, how to use the so-called steepest descent algorithm that requires the gradient of the objective function to come into the picture to calculate the optimum solution for a function that have more than two variables, two or more than two. Uh, acknowledgement. More information you can find it at uh, mathforcollege.com. Thank you.